some problems can really help you understand how dynamic programming actually works. One such example is the problem triangle on lead code. And trust me, once you are done with this video, you will be really happy how you were able to solve this problem. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at the sample test case. Next, we will see why a greedy algorithmic approach won't work for this problem. And then we will see two types of solution using the dynamic programming algorithm, the top down approach and the bottom up approach. Following it, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you understand how all of this actually works in action. Without further ado, let's get started. Let us quickly try to make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given a triangle of integers and you have to determine the smallest sum that is possible starting from the top. Now there is one condition though. You can only go to the adjacent nodes when you are traveling in the downward direction. So what does that actually mean? So a triangle is given in the form of a lift, right? And when you expand this lift, your triangle will look something like this, correct? The first element is 2. Then in the next level, you have 3 and 4. In the next level, you have 6, 5, 7 and so on, right? Now, you have to find the minimum sum when you are starting from the top, right? You start from the top and then you can only go to one of the adjacent nodes. So when you're starting from 2, you can either go to 3 or you can go to 4, right? But what happens when you move one level down? If you come at 3, then you can only go to either 6 or 5. You cannot go to 7, right? But if you come at 4, then you can only go to 5 and 7 and you cannot go to 6, right? So this will keep on happening as you move down and down. Let us say I reached 7, then I can only advance to 8 and 3. I cannot advance to 4 and 1, right? So when you're moving down and when you're selecting elements, it is very important that you select these elements in such a way that the sum that you form should be the minimum sum. In this particular test case, you will find a minimum sum when you select 2, then 3, then 5, and then 1. And this sum will be 11. And for this particular test case, 11 is your answer. Now, it is also very important to understand how you are forming this triangle. For example, if I form my triangle like this, now this is also a triangle, right? But your problem cannot be solved using this. Because if you look at this case, 5 has 3 adjacent elements, 4, 1 and 8. However, that is not the case. 5 only has 2 adjacent elements and that is 1 and 8. So in this kind of a problem statement, it is very essential that you understand the problem statement correctly. Now, if you want to try this problem once again on your own, feel free. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution and see what we can do about it. Let us say you are given this triangle, right? And I ask you, okay, find me the minimum sum. The most obvious solution would be a brute force solution, right? And that is to explore each path. So you will try 2, 3, 6, 4, then you will try 2, 3, 6, 1, then 2, 3, 5, 8, so many combinations. You will just spend a lot of time trying to find all these combinations. And certainly this brute force method will not work. You need to find something better, right? The next solution that could come to your mind is a greedy approach, right? And how does a greedy approach work? You have to find out the minimum sum, correct? And this is your greedy criteria. So what do you do about it? You start with the first element and that is two. Next, you have to select some element from the bottom level, right? Being greedy, you want a minimum sum and what you can do is, okay, out of these two elements, I will select the smaller element. So I select three. Now moving on, I get to level three. And this time I have to select from these two numbers. Being greedy again, I select the smaller element. And then once again, I move on to level four. I will try to select the minimum element from the two adjacent elements. And then once again, I select one. And voila, I found the minimum sum. You are going to try to write the code for this, but eventually it will fail. Why? That is because a greedy approach will not work for this problem. Let us take up one more example. This time my triangle looks like this. Look at all the elements. And let us try the greedy approach once again. 
I start off with element number two. Moving on to my next level, I pick one. Then I can either go to eight or I can go to nine. I pick the smaller element that is eight. And then out of four and one, I will pick one again. So what is the sum that I get? That is 12, correct? But the minimum sum is not 12. If you look closely, the minimum sum will be formed when we pick up these four elements from each of these levels. So from two, I go to three, then one, and then three again. And in this case, the minimum sum will be nine. So if your input triangle looks like this, then nine should be your answer, right? So this is how we can say that, okay, a greedy algorithmic approach will not be an applicable solution. Definitely, we need to approach this problem in some other way, right? And that is where the concept of dynamic programming comes in, right? What do you do in dynamic programming? At every level, you are going to store your results, right? So if your triangle was only one level, what is the minimum sum? That is two, correct? If your triangle just had two levels, then what is the minimum sum? The minimum sum would be three, right? Because you're picking two and one, correct? What if your triangle had three levels? Now, what you need to do is you need to store the result for this small triangle at level number two, and you are gonna include this new level as well, right? So this is how you know you have to use memoization. Next, we will add one more level and we will keep on adding levels to find the ultimate solution, right? Let us see how we can actually apply dynamic programming to solve this question. Now that we have concluded that we need to use dynamic programming, how do you actually solve it? Let us take up our sample triangle once again, right? This is the second example that we have. And what we're going to do is we have to store the results at each level. That is memoization, correct? So I have created this empty triangle where I will be storing all of these results. And how do you proceed? Let us say my triangle only had one level. Then what is the minimum sum that I can get? I can only get a minimum sum of two, correct? Moving on, what if my triangle had two levels? Then from element two, I can either go to one or I can go to three, correct? And what I'm going to just do is I will write down these values. So either I do two plus one, that is three, or I do two plus three and that is five. So now if someone asks you, what is the minimum sum for a triangle of height two? Then you're just going to scan these two values and you can say that, okay, three will be the minimum sum, right? Now simply extend this concept. Let us say this time my triangle has three levels, right? That means from level two, I need to get to level three. So how are we going to fill these values? From one, either I can go to eight or I can go to nine. So either I add a eight or I add a nine. So if I'll add a eight to three, I will get 11. Or if I add a nine to three, I will get 12. But wait a minute, you can also go to the next level from number three, correct? From three also, you can either go to nine or you can go to one, right? If I'm going to number nine, then I have to add nine. So I will try to add nine to five, correct? When I add nine plus five, that is 14. So I have either a choice of 12 or 14 in this place. And in the next place, I can add one, right? So I will try to add a one to five and that will give me six. This is the interesting part over here. When you have two values, pick the smaller one because we have to determine the minimum sum, right? So from these two values, what I'm going to do is I will just pick the value 12. Do you see how we are approaching this problem now? So if someone asks you, what is the minimum sum if your height is three, then you're just going to scan this third level and you can say that, okay, six will be my minimum sum. Now, once again, expand this to include the fourth level as well. For the fourth level from eight, I can either add four or I can add one. So to 11, either I will add four or I will add one. Now to nine, either I can add one or I can add eight. So to 12, either I will add one or I will add eight, right? So this gives me 12 plus one, that is 13 or 12 plus eight, that is 20. For the last one, six, either I add eight or I add a three. So six plus eight is 14 and six plus three is nine. Out of these two values, pick the smaller one. Now, if someone asks you, what is the minimum sum if your height of the triangle is four, then nine is your answer, correct? And this is how we were able to apply the dynamic programming technique. And we went from top all the way to down. And this is why this is the top down technique. Similarly, we can also solve this problem using the bottom up technique. 
let us take up our sample triangle once again. And this is my empty space where I will store all of my memoization, right? So when we went from top to bottom, we started off with the first element, right? That was two. Now we want to go bottom up, right? So where do we start? We start off with the lowermost row, correct? So in the lowermost row, I will write down four, one, eight, and three. Now, what do you have to do? You have to move up one level, right? And to determine these values, you want a smaller sum, right? So if you're coming from this direction, then four plus eight will give you 12, right? But if you come to eight from one, then you will get the value of nine, right? And since we have to get the smaller value, we will choose nine over here, correct? Similarly, if you have to reach nine, how can you do it? Either you come by a one or you go by eight, correct? We want a smaller sum, right? So I will choose the value one over here. So I can simply write down nine plus one and that is 10. Similarly for one, how can we reach? Either you can use eight or you can use three. Since we want a smaller value, I will use three. So three plus one will give me four and I can write down four in my result, correct? Now using the similar technique, move up one level you have to reach one. To reach one, either you can move from this place or you can move up from this place, right? But the numbers at this place are nine and 10 and you want to pick the smaller value. So I'm gonna pick nine and then I will write one plus nine and that is 10. Similarly, to reach three, either I can use this place or I can use this place. And the numbers in this place are 10 and four. I will choose the smaller value that is four. So I will do three plus four and that is seven. Once more for the topmost value, either you can reach from this place or this place. And the sums at both of these places are 10 and seven. I will pick the smaller sum and I will do two plus seven and that will give me nine. So in a bottom up approach, what do you see? You see that you get your minimum sum at the top and this will be your answer, right? Now, Although this bottom up approach is easier to understand and implement, the top down approach is very effective to understand how dynamic programming actually works. Now let us quickly do a dry run of this bottom up approach and see how it actually works. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement the solution. And on the right, once again, I have my sample triangle that is passed in as a list of lists to this method minimum total. Now what we want to do. First of all, we want to deal with the height of this triangle, right? Because we were going from bottom to up. So what we do is we initialize the height and then we also create a DP two dimensional array that will store all of these results, correct? Oh, and by the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available in my GitHub profile. Moving on with our dry run, you know that we go from the bottom up direction, right? And hence we start a for loop that will start at the lowermost level, that is height minus one, correct? And for each iteration, what do we do? We will fill in this DP array. And what do we do over here? We take the element and then we add the minimum of the two bottom adjacent elements, right? You know that when an array is initialized, all these values will be zero, correct? So when we are calculating for the bottom most row, it will try to pick a minimum value out of all of these zeros, right? Since they are same and they are zero, the bottom most row will still remain four, one, eight, and three, correct? Things will start to get interesting when we move on to a upper row, eight, nine, one. As soon as we reach the first element that is eight, what do we do over here? We get the element that is eight, and then we try to find the minimum value from the lower level. So for eight, we will either add four or we will add one. Since we are picking the smaller value, I will pick one and I'm gonna write down nine over here. Similarly for nine, either I will choose one or eight. I pick the minimum value, so I write down 10. Similarly for one, I will either pick from eight or three. I pick the smaller value that is three, so I write down four. So this way, you are gonna complete this memoization array and ultimately at the top, the zero comma zero element, you will have your answer. And that will be the minimum sum, right? The time complexity of this solution is order of n square. That is because we are using two for loops and the space complexity of this solution is also order of n square. That is because we need to create a memoization array to store all of our intermediate results. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, 
I just want to say that whenever you see a problem and you feel that this problem will require dynamic programming, first of all, try to prove that this problem cannot be solved by the greedy algorithmic approach. Because if there is a greedy solution, you do not necessarily want to apply the dynamic programming technique, right? And to prove that this problem can be solved with the dynamic programming, the problem should have an optimal substructure property. That means each of the problem part is a complete problem in itself. And when you solve the entire problem, you will arrive at your answer. In our dry run, we use the bottom up approach, correct? Try to solve this problem on your own using the top down approach of dynamic programming. Tell me all the problems that you face. Can you find any other technique to solve the same problem? What is the time complexity? How do things change? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. Also let me know what other problems did you find which can be solved using this top down and a bottom up approach. So what do you do about it? You will be also glad to know that a text based explanation to this content is available on the website studyalgorithms.com, a pretty handy website for your programming needs. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also tell me what do you want to learn next. Until then, see ya.